Hello everyone, welcome to another openings video. Today, we'll be taking a deep look at the bird's opening. Before I get into the bird's opening, I wanted to mention that the bird's opening is very similar to the English opening, and there's many ideas that I'm going to be referencing from the English opening that uh, are used in the bird's opening as well. So if you haven't watched the video about the English opening, make sure you check it out. It's uh, very similar to the bird's opening, and um, both of these openings I would highly recommend you using, uh, or at least giving them a try. Uh, so the link to the English opening will be in the description, as well as a little icon will pop up on this side of the screen, um, and you can press it and find that video. Once you finish watching that one, come back here. Uh, and you're going to see that many of the things and ideas are very similar. So uh, the bird's opening begins with F4. Um, and just like the English opening, uh, you're trying to control some of the center without actually having a piece in the center. Uh, and the English opening was very heavily controlling the light squares, uh, especially the light squares in the center. The bird's opening is going to be very heavily controlling the dark squares. Um, so you're going to have many pieces coming into the development that are going to be controlling the dark squares on the board. And black has two main choices, um, but before I get into the two main variations that you're probably going to encounter, I'm going to talk to you first um, about a gambit that you might sometimes get, um, and maybe you want to try out yourself, which is going ahead and playing this uh, e5 move here. Um, it's not my favorite gambit. You're trading an outside pawn for a center pawn. Um, so as white, I would highly recommend capturing this. Uh, and then no matter what black plays, probably uh, this knight here trying to recapture this pawn, I would just ignore that and play this move saying, you know what, okay, I traded uh, a, a worse pawn for a better pawn. Now let's just continue developing. And after black captures, uh, you can even play a, a d4 and kick the knight back out uh, and then just continue development. Uh, however you'd like. So that's what I would recommend uh, if you encounter this gambit. Um, but now let's get and, and now let's stick to the main theory theory uh, that Black's going to probably show in the game, which is going to be either uh, one of two moves: moving the sorry, moving the knight uh, to f6, or moving uh, this pawn here uh, to d5. Both gaining control uh, of the light squares, which makes a lot of sense. Black or uh, white is saying, you know what? I'm going to control the dark squares. White is saying, okay, I'll take the light squares. Makes sense. Um, and these two, uh, these two moves, uh, this and this, they go very um, kind of, they go together. Meaning the first move that black plays might be this, and then the second move will be this. Or the first move will be this, and the second move will be this. Um, or sorry, after I play something, the second move will be this. Um, because it doesn't matter uh, what black plays, you're always going to play. Ahead. You're always going to play the same thing. So let's say for this video that black decides to play this move here. You're going to go ahead and play the knight to this square. Um, again, controlling the dark squares um, uh, with with multiple pieces now. So uh, and and black is going to play this square now, controlling the the light squares with multiple pieces. Um, so just like I talked about. And again, if black decided to start with the knight. Uh, this move would have been moving this here. So this position right here, this is what you're going to get yourself into after uh, both players play their second move. Um, so now let's get into what you're going to play. You're going to go ahead and play uh, this move here because the light squares um, are not going to be something that you want. Uh, uh, you don't want a light square bishop because uh, until at least maybe beginning of end game, um, all the light squares will be taken by the black pieces, which means that a light square bishop is going to be completely useless. It'll essentially be like a pawn. Um, and so if you can trade um, black's light square bishop, which is going to be very, very useful um, for black because he's wanting to control all the light squares. So if you can trade your light square bishop, which is terrible for you, for black's great light square bishop, that's a wonderful trade, which is why you're going to go ahead and open this up hoping to play this move and trading off your light square bishop. So let me show you what this could look like. Black is going to play this move here. Um, makes sense, right? Controlling more squares and this time actually grabbing a little bit of the of the dark squares. Uh, but don't stress too much. You know, when we're talking about controlling the dark squares, you'll see I'm going to bring in a ton more pieces um, and, and the dark squares will be yours. Um, so don't worry about this. This is this is the best move for black. Uh, it's just very controlling and um, a nice setup of, of two pawns. But like I said, you're going to go ahead of here, 
check your opponent. And the pawn no longer can prevent this, which means that black is either going to have to uh, trade uh, or offer a trade with the knight uh, or with the bishop. If it's with the, with the bishop, like I just explained, take that. Take that. Uh, black's going to capture probably with, uh, well, uh, not necessarily the queen, maybe the knight, um, but probably the queen. Um, great. You've gotten rid of something that you're probably not going to be able to use uh, until end game. Um, for, for something that black uh, really used um, a lot of games where it stays on the board. And however, if black decides to go ahead and play uh, moving the knight either here uh, or here probably, uh, that's all right. Just keep this pin, okay? Don't, don't capture. If you capture, then um, although maybe the pawn structure is a little bit more weak for black, you traded a bishop for a knight. I don't like doing those trades. So you want your king to be very safe. And so by moving out this bishop, you're not only preparing to, to trade off a bishop, but also you're getting ready to castle. Um, so next you're going to castle. Black usually, instead of playing this move, will play this move. And uh, I think this is a good idea for black. I think it's the best. And you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to go ahead and play a, a move like this, preparing to go ahead and, uh, and target the king's side um, when black castles uh, and this will also get you uh, control of more of the dark squares uh, so you can see that you're really going to be hammering down on the dark squares and black is going to be a having a hard time even with this dark square bishop and this piece here to get control of the dark squares um, so after this black is probably going to go ahead and uh, continue with its plan of castling uh, and you're going to go and play uh, as well this move here kind of eyeing down this uh, king once the king uh, castles and uh, now black is obviously going to castle and you have freedom now. You've done everything in the kind of opening book in a sense. Um, so you've gone to the, to the main position of the bird's opening, which is this right here, where both players castled uh, kingside and both players have uh, this, this bishop on the diagonal. And you have... Um, you have uh, control of the of the dark squares. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and share the video with your friends. And I'll see you guys next time.